We will discuss active slip systems. Let us take an example uh, of cubic prose packed crystal. This crystal, as we have seen, has a slip system consisting of 111 type of plane with 1 bar 1 0 directions as the slip direction. So there are 111 family of planes and there are 4 such planes. So these are slip planes. So 4 slip planes. Recall that this angular bracket denotes a family, family of symmetry related planes. Similarly, 1, 1 bar 0 direction are the slip directions and there are 3 such slip directions in each plane. 3 slip directions in each plane. So 4 slip planes into 3 directions in each plane gives us a total of 12 slip systems. So 12 geometrically distinct slip systems are there in the cubic close packed crystal. When I say that 111 represents a family, let us write individual members of that family. So this family for cubic close packed crystal means the plane 111, another one we can write as bar 111, the third one as 1 bar 11 and fourth and final one I can write as bar 1 bar 11. These are four distinct orientations or different orientations of close packed planes which act as slip plane in the cubic close packed crystal. Let us look at one by one some of these examples. So the first one is the 111 plane which I have drawn here. So the 111 plane x, y and z it is, it, this is showing the unit cell of the cubic close packed crystal and this is the x, y and z ax axes and a 1, 1, 1 plane will intersect the x axis, y axis and z axis at one unit that is equal to the lattice parameter. So through these three corners the 1, 1, 1 plane passes and the three directions, the three slip directions which lie in this plane are are the three blue lines which is bounding this plane. These are the face diagonals of the cube and these face diagonals are actually close pack directions of the cubic close pack structure and they act as slip plane. So let us for example look at the base direction, the direction in the basal plane here. So if, if I go from this point to the point there, I have to go one step in the negative direction and one step in the x and one step in the positive direction in y. So this is bar 1, 1, 0. So this is equivalent to the direction which I have shown here, bar 1, 1, 0. If I would have drawn the arrow the other way around, then it will become 1 bar 1 0. So either way, you can write 1 bar 1 0 or bar 1 1 0 representing this face diagonal of the bottom face of the cube. Now, there are four planes. So if, if I draw the next plane, this is bar 1 bar 1 1 then 1 bar 1 1 and so on. So I have listed all the four planes. I have shown them in different cubes. Showing them in, in the same cube will make the diagram too complicated. 
So for clarity, I have shown them in four different cubes and in each cube, I have pointed out the three face diagonals which are acting as the slip direction. The important question which we are going to answer in this video is that for a given stress, for a given uniaxial tensile stress, which of these 12 slip system be active? Which means on which of these 12 slip system the slip will actually take place. So let us look at this again. So this brings us back to the concept of resolved shear stress and cement factor. We now have a tensile specimen. The uniaxial tensile stress is applied. And this is suppose is a single crystal of cubic close packed structure which we were talking about. So this is single crystal of CCP. Now the unit cell of the CCP will be oriented in some way with respect to the stress axis and based on that the orientation and I have shown you one slip plane this green slip plane with a slip plane normal n and a direction a slip direction the red direction going in this direction as the slip direction so one of the slip system has been identified for a given slip system and for a given stress axis orientation with respect to that slip system we define two angles theta so theta is the angle between the slip plane normal Theta is the angle between the slip plane normal and the tensile axis. So theta between slip plane normal and the tensile axis, the stress axis. Similarly, phi, the other angle phi is the angle between, this is between slip direction and the tensile axis. and the stress axis phi and we have seen in a previous video that the resolved shear stress that is shear stress on the slip plane in the slip direction the resolved shear stress is shear stress on the slip plane in the slip direction so this is stress is applied tensile stress sigma is the applied tensile stress as shown here applied tensile stress times cosine of theta times cosine of phi so this factor quite often is called is given a special name cos theta cos phi is given a special name cement factor so applied tensile stress multiplied by cement factor gives us the resolved shear stress and it's the resolved shear stress which will which is effective in causing the slip but a small amount of resolved shear stress will not cause any slip so resolved shear stress has to reach a value a critical value called the critical resolved shear stress at which slip will begin. Let's look at it diagrammatically. So let us plot this equation. So y axis is resolved shear stress and x axis is the applied tensile stress. 
then this is a nice simple equation equation of a straight line passing through origin so we have a simple straight line with the slope cos theta cos phi so let me call this cos theta cos phi this is the slope of this line and so the resolved shear stress keeps increasing as the tensile stress increases with this as the slope however when the slip slip will not begin unless and until resolved shear stress reaches a critical value let us call that to crss so when the result when the tensile stress reaches this value this is what we usually call the yield stress let me write it as sigma y so when the resolved shear stress reaches the critical resolved shear stress or correspondingly the applied tensile stress reaches the yield stress we have yielding or we have slippage but then we are working with 12 slip system so this is not the only slip system there may be another slip system in this crystal and we have seen that the, for our example of ccp there are 12 such slip system so there may be 12 different lines like this depending upon the value of cos theta cos phi so let us think of another slip system with a higher value of cos theta cos phi let us say cos theta prime cos phi prime because the orientation of that slip plane will be different and so theta and phi will be different and this product this summit factor will be different so now on this plane also slip will occur only when the resolved shear stress reaches the critical resolved shear stress but as you can see now this happens this happens at a much lower tensile stress sigma y prime compared to the original sigma y on the slip system the blue slip system so the green slip system reaches the resolved shear stress earlier than the blue slip system so which means that if i compare if i am comparing only these two slip systems it's the green slip system which will be the active slip system so if i have all the 12 slip system for example i have listed here all the 12 slip system which we have seen in a previous screen so um, if i list all of them and if i calculate cos theta cos phi for all of them i calculate these values for all of them then i pick out the maximum value out of this so the maximum so let us say slip system slip system with maximum value of cos theta into cos phi that is the maximum value of summit factor will be the active slip system cos theta cos phi this is what will be the active active slip system there is another method an stereographic method to get the same answer to find which direction which slip system is the active system so stereographic method
to determine active slip system in CCP crystal. This method, sometimes known as Deal's rule, is very very interesting rule. So here we have the standard stereographic projection of cubic crystal. So, so this, since since zero zero one is in the center, we will call this. At zero zero one standard projection of cubic crystal. So the way to get way to get this. Uh, active slip system in this case is to first try to plot in this stereographic projection the various directions are shown here to you and what you have to do is the tensile axis will act will project as a point or as a pole in this stereographic projection so all you have to do is to plot your tensile axis so let us say i plot my tensile axis and it falls there. So this is the tensile axis. So the way to get the way to get this uh, active slip system for this active slip system for this is to first to get the plane to get the plane let us uh, we know that one 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 kind of planes are the slip plane in this case so what we have to do is to first identify in which stereographic triangle the tensile axis is falling so we have we are seeing that in this case the tensile axis is falling in this stereographic triangle. This is my stereographic triangle of interest. Then look at the 1 1 1 kind of direction in that stereographic triangle and reflect the 1 1 1 direction in the opposite side of the stereographic triangle. So this is my stereographic triangle and if I reflect 1 1 1 I go along this line and I come to this bar 1 one one so this bar one 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 becomes becomes the slip plane the active slip plane for the given tensile axis now this plane will have three directions and we have to again identify which of those three directions will be the active slip direction. To get that, again we look at the 110, in this case 001 type of direction in my stereographic triangle. So that is this red direction and reflect that direction in the opposite side of my triangle. So I do that. I reach here 101. So 101 becomes my slip direction. Active slip direction. So stereo geometrically you are able to see quickly which is the active slip plane and active slip direction which here also you could have got and you can verify that for any given direction for 
deals rule gives you the same plane uh, or same slip system as you can calculate by the maximum value of the cement factor some special cases you can see here is that if the tensile axis suppose tensile axis falls in the 111 kind of direction suppose here then you can see that it is actually at the intersection of six triangles 1 2 3 4 5 6 so you will apply deal rule deals rule for all these six triangles at the same time all these six triangles at the same time so you will get six slip system so a direction like 111 as a tensile axis will activate slip, six slip systems at the same time this is called multiple slip similarly if the direction was 101 type of direction then it is an intersection of four triangles and four slip systems will be equally stressed and four slip system will activate together. So thank you very much.